Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Young Blue had some issues with Tory Lanez remixing his song, Your Mind Still, featuring Drake. Listen to this. I hope it ain't take you long to record that song. I hope you ain't spend a lot of money, 12 hours in the studio recording that song, because soon you upload that YouTube, that come straight down. So uh, go get your money back. Go get a refund. Go get a receipt. Boy, you didn't tag me. You didn't show the Lord that man. Down did it. Bye-bye. Hey, I agree with Young Blue, because you should wow. cite your source, especially with a young Whoa. artist. Yeah, with a young artist, absolutely, because it's, I'm going to tell you why. It's folks out there who who don't know who Young Blue is, you know what I mean? But they know Tory Lanez. They might hear that song and be like, oh, that's Tory Lanez's record. It's like, no, it's Young Blue record. Give the young man some credit. If he was an older, more established artist that people know, I would understand the jacket for beat. But just to take a young artist song and not at least say, what up, Young Blue, or something? Nah. Nah, he's a top 10 artist, and artists have been, been doing it since hip-hop was created. Somebody puts out a record and do, somebody does a freestyle over it. I we, never, let me tell you we something. We do it all the time. I've, I've heard not that. Not just Tory. I've, every artist does I've it. heard that record, but I don't know Young Blue. I hear the record on the radio, but I don't know who that is. Well, what does that mean? Jay Z's done a whole mixtape taking people's beats. Like Jackin everybody beats, does. It. Yes. Nas has done it. You know, Chains. All right. Well, it. well, well, well. Young but Blue and his credit. team had that had that song taken down, and you can't do that. <laughs> and then he tweeted, "Tag me, and I put it back." I'm a real N word at Tory Lanez, and Tory Lanez said, "At Young Blue, crazy thing is, I love your music and your song. That's why I remixed it. You're an incredible artist, and I've been yeah. listening to you since unappreciated. But if you feel some sort of way, we can just talk like men over a phone and not social media. Love, bro. bro so Drake has done it many a times. A lot of people have done it. The easiest thing to do is give somebody some credit. I mean, all all, all a young man wanted was an ad on Twitter." You know what I'm saying? At least cite your source and say, tell well, me what the Blue, original record is. Young Blue responded to that and said, I can't call you if I don't have your number, G. I don't want to beef. I like the record, actually. I just felt disrespected. You just saw me at Rolling Loud tonight and ain't say a word to me. And Rolling I even loud. performed the song you said you like when I took a pic with your artist. I go get in my sprinter and see you remix my song and ain't show love either. So I'm a real person. I get offended. Send your jack. Let's talk like men. It's on you. I'm leaving it alone, though. But let's not play victim, gang. I'll never be on no clout-ish. Yeah, I agree. Artists been Every jacking beats for years, but I, I I do agree with him. He's a young artist. He's on the come up. People don't know him yet. Just to get a man some credit, give him a shout out. Ot Genesis did it. Mary J. Blige has done it. Like th that's what hip hop is about. Just I think he does. also felt like I just saw you tonight, and you ain't say nothing. You What's know, the, yeah, so that was Rolling Loud. That. Rolling Loud was the night. Yeah, what happened? Rolling Loud. I thought, <laughs> are we in the pandemic? Rolling Loud was happening. <laughs> I guess so. Mm. I don't think there's nothing wrong with giving a young boy credit. All right, now let's talk about Dave Chappelle. Overnight, he put out a redemption song, and it's a new 10-minute clip. You know, he has this deal with Netflix, and he's been putting out all kinds of content, and he's been performing in Austin, Texas. I think they just closed out all their shows in Austin. Dave Chappelle did end up getting coronavirus. You know, he's been doing these shows in Yellow Springs, Ohio, and, and then uh, he moved it over to Austin with Joe Rogan, and he started it off talking about getting coronavirus and I just tried to find a way that I could work. You see what we've been doing. All of you who had to endure this invasive test and wear these masks just so we could be out and hang out and be together. I tried. And after all these months, after doing all these shows, God damn it, my number was up. And then I had the Rona. Oh. <laughs> when I said I had the coronavirus, the overwhelming majority of people wished me well. Said, we hope you get better. Take care of yourself. We don't want anything bad to happen to you. But there was a faction of people who said, you see that, Dave Chappelle? That's why we stay inside where it's safe. Well, enjoy yourselves, motherfuckers, because I'm better now. <laughs> All right, and then he goes on to talk about actually... That sounds like quarantine shaming a little bit. What? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think... That sounds like quarantine shaming just a little bit. You know what I mean? Just because people want to follow CDC guidelines and stay in the house, that's fine. Yeah, you know what I mean? What's wrong with that? I think, he, I think he was talking about people that were like, ha ha, you see, you see. But he's saying that he's for months done this. He's, you know, gotten people tested to even attend his shows. They socially distance at the shows. Anybody that participates in activities with him has to get tested before they go, come, get tested yeah, twice he could, a day. But, but he's proof and that, he did what he could. Yeah, but he's proof that even if you take proper precautions, you can still get it. But even so, that don't mean that, if, you know, even if you still want to stay in the house, that's still fine. 
Right, but I guess he had an issue with people who didn't just say, hey, we wish you well. There were people that were like, good for you, ha ha. And well. that's how he felt. And so anyway, he goes on to talk about his show, The Chappelle Show, coming back to Netflix. Here's what he said. I never asked Comedy Central for anything. If you remember, I said, I'm going to my real boss and I came to you. I asked you to stop watching the show and thank God almighty for you. You did. You made that show worthless because without your eyes, it's nothing. And when you stopped watching it, they called me and I got my name back and I got my license back and I got my show back and they paid me millions of dollars. Thank you very much. I mean, there was no doubt that he wouldn't get his show back. I mean, he's Dave Mother F and Chappelle. And I'm, I'm also very happy that he saluted uh, Chris McCarthy, too. Drop on the clues bonds for Chris McCarthy. If you watch the, you know, the whole thing, he shouted out Chris McCarthy. Chris McCarthy is a guy who gave me my first ever overall deal in TV, and he's an executive who gets it. Not only does he have a great eye for talent, more importantly, he always wants to do what's right by people. I love that guy. We need more executives like him. And he's got seven women on his senior management team. Salute to Nina I think he, And if you watch it, Chappelle was also saying that People were telling him he was never going to get his show back and there was nothing they could do about it. Well, those are people and, who don't know the business then and mm-hmm. they don't know the leverage Dave Chappelle has <laughs> and they don't know the, the powers that be that are in position now at CBS Viacom because if they actually knew Chris McCarthy, they would know, yes, Dave would get his show back. And Dave got the power at this point. He's in a power position. He got a powerful position. All right, mm-hmm. He told people not to watch it and like he said, people financially, didn't it. it didn't make sense for them. If nobody's going to watch the show doesn't make sense to put it on. And, and, and more All importantly, right. I'm telling you, Chris McCarthy will always do what's right. If you know Chris McCarthy, then you, then, then you know that. that that's, what, that's the type of stuff he fights for. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. What are we talking about? Well, let's talk about Casey Goodson Jr. Now, we've had his mom and his attorney and his mom's attorney on previously. He was shot and killed by police in the back as he was entering his own home. They are going to give us an update, and I want you guys to really pay attention to this because it's heartbreaking to hear. And the police officer who shot and killed him is still working, still has his job. All right, so we'll talk to him next. And then every hour on the hour, we're playing this Nipsey Jay-Z joint, what it feel like. So get your ass up. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 